And when we marry, we want to be able to get married according to the laws of Islam, according to Sharia. When we enter into business transactions with one another, we'd like to enter into business transactions according to Sharia. And when we inherit, we would like to inherit according to Sharia. So that is what we are asking for. When they hear the word Sharia, they only think of penal codes and they fear that the Muslims are trying to implement the penal codes in the Sharia penal codes in the US. No, that is not the case. All we are trying to do is retain what we have. But when anti-Sharia laws are being brought to various states, they have these very generic statements of banning Sharia. If they ban Sharia, then I cannot go to the mosque. I cannot go, before we go pray, we have to make ablution, we have to wash ourselves. And I cannot wash in a public place. And no one is asking us to implement penal code in the, uh, in the U.S. Does that answer your question? Is, is there conflict between what you would have in Islam as a uh, as penal code? So, for example, let's say we talked about the issue of contraceptive, contraceptive, right? So, Catholics they may have a view of contraception. Islam we may have a view of contraception. As a country, they may have a view of contraception. So. We cannot implement our laws in the U.S. We have to follow the law that is already there. So in certain occasions, there could be conflict. But again, none of them, the Catholics are not trying to implement their way of life on the rest of the Americans. The Muslims are not trying to do that either. David Nelson, yes, you have can I follow up on that a little bit? I'm just curious about the Jewish and Muslim tradition, if you have a similar uh, sort of thing, a civil disobedience. Uh, Laws that said that African Americans uh, could be owned as slaves or could be oppressed. Um, and there were people in this country who are laws that said that women cannot have the right to vote. There are people who said the law of the land is the law of the land. There were religious people, and I'm more familiar with them from the Christian tradition, who said an illegal law is a law that I must break and and accept the consequences of breaking that law. So they engage in acts of civil disobedience. Is there a similar tradition in the Jewish and Muslim world? So, like I said, we have to, as Muslims, the Sharia says that we have to follow the law of the land as long as the law of the land does not break the law of the Creator. And what do you do then? So then we cannot follow, because let's say, for example, if the country comes up and says that you have to make all your businesses based on interest, then we cannot obey that law. Would you be fine serving in the military and you, and you didn't believe this was a just war? Uh, actually, there are many Muslims that I know who served in the war. Because in those scenarios where they agree or not, they have to go because that is their service. They, have, so, they are bound by law to go and serve in the military. Would they serve in a war they felt was unjust and against the will of Allah? How do we know what the will of Allah is? We don't know. So how do we know what the will of Allah is? So if, if something happens and you're living in the country, and as part of living in the country, you have to go fight in the military, and we find Muslims <laughs> fighting in the military all the time. Even in Iraq and other places, Afghanistan, there are many Muslims, and they've given their life for this country. I know you delayed me one more question. All right. We'll make it, we'll make it snappy. Take a look. Hi, I just had one quick question. I wanted to comment on this gentleman over here about civil disobedience, and I'll give an example of that, but recently, Faison Saeed from CARE, Missouri, was in a story that he had mentioned that he was wanting to start a task force on the internet to basically patrol the internet that anyone that insulted Prophet Muhammad should be re reported to the authorities and should be prosecuted under Sharia. So I wanted to know what is that prosecution under Sharia for someone that insults the Prophet? Also, the Islamic Society of Greater Kansas City recently put out a petition asking for President Obama to pass a law making it illegal to insult the Prophet. My point is, under the First Amendment, the most important amendment, I would add, is civil di disobedience for any illegal, unconstitutional law. For someone to say that you can't insult the prophet would be saying that I don't have freedom of speech. And that would be obligatory for every American to be civil disobedient.
Thank you, you follow my point? Thank you for that very provocative question. And, uh, we'll be interested in the answer. So, uh, yes. saying is correct because at the time of Prophet Muhammad, uh, one of the neighbors of Prophet Muhammad, they used to throw, she used to throw trashes on Prophet Muhammad. Whenever he walks by, she throws trash on Prophet Muhammad. So one day, he did not see the trash. So she, he inquired what happened. Then he found out that women got ill. So he went and visited the women and wanted to find out what's going on. She did not put her to death. I mean, he did not put her to death. So yes, there are practices being followed by other countries, states, things like that. But do they follow the teachings of Islam? The answer is no. And there are very clear instructions in the Quran. For lack of time, I'm not going to go into those details. But I do agree with the sister. I know Faizan Said personally. And I don't think he's kind of the person who would say such a thing. All right, thank you very much for all of the questions. Uh, how about one more round of applause for our there's a lot more questions, but maybe we can set up some sort of email or, or a way that they can still ask their questions uh, in the future. It's the video causing outrage across the globe, from violent attacks to angry marches. Now the Innocence of Muslims film has local Islamic leaders calling on the U.S. government for change. Insulting somebody else or putting somebody else down uh, can incite violence and can make people lose their lives. 350 Kansas City Muslims want Americans' freedom of speech to ban language that defames, insults, or provokes violence. They're calling on President Obama to draw a line between free speech and hate speech. We want people to be free to say whatever they want, but again, we need some responsibility here. There is a difference between criticism and hate. Doug Bonney, an attorney representing the American Civil Liberties Union, strongly disagrees with the petition. Somebody's speech is no excuse for violence, that's right. But you can't, there are two problems with it. First of all, you can't punish the speaker for the violence practiced by others. Islamic leaders warn if we don't restrict insulting speech, attacks like the killing of United States Ambassador Christopher Stevens in Libya are bound to reoccur. But opponents worry restricting one freedom could jeopardize our right to express our views and practice our faith. In Kansas City, Sarah Hollenbeck, 41 Action News. Even President Obama has voiced his concern over the violent film, calling it cruel and disgusting, but he told the United Nations that he defends the freedom of expression, even for views that we profoundly disagree with. One thing we wanted people to understand is that first and foremost, Sharia is not just law, but rather it's the entire system of Islam. Another issue with this legislation is that it goes against the First Amendment of the Constitution because it not only targets uh, Islam specifically, but targets any foreign law within the state of Kansas will no longer be enforceable or allowed. For these reasons, we believe that this law should be vetoed by Governor Brownback within the state of Kansas. We believe that Governor Brownback should veto this piece of legislation and not allow it to pass. Not allow it to go anywhere and stop it where it stands right today, which is, and that's why we've gathered everyone here. Hi, uh, my name is Riaz Larif. Uh, I'm the director of Islamic Circle of North America, the local uh, Kansas City chapter. And we'd like to express our opposition to this uh, bill as well. This allegation about Sharia cannot be farther from the truth. Sharia fundamentally governs three, governs three aspects of a Muslim's life. It governs our beliefs. It governs our character, it governs our deeds and actions, it governs what do we do as a Muslim. We pray five times a day, we fast the month of Ramadan, we give charity, we go to pilgrimage, we Quran and the Sunnah, the tradition of Prophet Muhammad, this claim that the American Muslims are trying to impose 
Sharia on the USA is a claim which is false and unfounded. The Muslims, we understand that the law of this country is the US Constitution and no American Muslim is trying to enforce Sharia on this land. American Muslims living in the state of Kansas sincerely and strongly urge the governor, Sam Brownback, to veto this bill and save us all from further shame and misery. اللي يسب النبي عليه الصلاه والسلام هل لو جاء واعتذر وقبل الحذاء وقال انا عايز كل المسلمين يعدوا كل واحد يضربني بالنعل هل من حق الحاكم ان يقبل هذا ده سؤال انا بطرحه وهجاوب عليه الجواب أنه لا يجوز لأحد قط أن يقبل هذا طب وما نعمل في إيه نقتله قال لك ده تاب برضو نقتله حتى وإن تاب 